Hello everyone, this is Counter Yolo, bringing you another video talking about survivability in Star Trek Online. And today I'm going to go over my personal tier list for the various types of energy types inside the game for tanking. Um, there, there was a bit of request for me to do this, even though I personally feel like there's a lot of information already online about this, but because there's demand for it, I'm going to go through it. Just as a, just as a reminder, I'm not going to go over the mission sets, reputation sets, or the lobby store weapons inside of this video. That is simply because, um, as I've explained certain things in the past to some people, some of you have gotten confused and thought that you could get multiple of certain types of things from re reputations or from the lobby store and have wasted a lot of money doing so. So the weapons that I'm just going over today are ones that you could load out your entire ship with if you so chose to do so. Um, feel free to see the time links in the, the description of the video for whatever particular energy type that you are looking looking forward to actually learning a little bit more about. Because um, yeah, this is a pretty long um, pre presentation with over 60 slides in total. So yeah, this is going to be a long video. And so I'm actually not going to go over in, in a super amount of detail in terms of all these different types of variants. Um, if, if you want some more information on those, Feel free to pause the video and read more of what's going on. So my first section is going to be on Polaron weapons. These weapons are the ones that I personally prefer to use simply because the ones from the Lucari reputation are super awesome and they give you a lot of healing and he and healing for both your hull and, and for your shields. Um, you're, they're, they're able to be obtained fairly easily from crafting as well as from a lot of the Gamma Quadrant missions. Um, not to mention that it has extremely good DPS support, um, right, right behind Phaser and, and Disruptor in terms of a lot of your higher DPS types of builds are going to be using Polaron now. It only has seven energy, energy variants, but it does have the best one in there, so there's not really much to say much about it besides that. And the fact that regular Polarons is supposed to be built, supposed to, their, their whole basis was supposed to be around power drain but half of the variants don't even have power drain in them at all so just take your pick upon, upon the ones that you want now at the very bottom of my list is the thoron infused polarm weapon it's not that this is a bad weapon it's just that for a tank player having a placate on the weapon a force placate on there uh, whenever you have this thing going off really sucks so the way that the, the placate mechanic works inside of Star Trek Online is that whenever you placate someone, they cannot see you and they cannot attack you for a certain amount of time. A, um, area of effect damage over, over time abilities will still affect you, but any targeted type of abilities will miss whenever, you, whenever the placate effect goes on and it just really sucks. Um, there are a lot of PvP groups that will really ban a lot of various things around placating enemies inside the game. Placates and confuses a lot of PvP players like to ban. Uh, they'll ban those a lot more before they'll ban like having lot, lots of pets because there's a lot of ways to counter pets inside Star Trek Online. Um, yeah, so because of that, throw on a fuse polarize at the very bottom of my list for my tanking list. Um, Prozonic Polaron. It's also because really the point of this extra proc for Polaron is just to do more damage. That's really what this extra proton proc, additionally to the Polaron proc, really just does. Um, outside of PvP, this isn't really that effective. Because, um, I mean, it, it, it's about as effective that might as well just have another damage modifier on your weapon than to just have a proton thing on there. This is from Dyson Joint Command reputation this was this was originally designed to um, synergize with the proton cannon but yeah kind of the way things are um, phase polaron slightly more useful but i don't personally like the synergy between the phaser proc and the polaron proc so it's only number five plus you have to get it off off of the exchange which kind of sucks um, the dominion polaron is from the boldly they rode infamous mission where the meme Kirtland here um, came from. And um, this is a, a little bit better synergy between Polaron and Tetron. Both of those procs are, are used frequently for a lot of drain builds. And so classically, a lot of your 
super old Polaron builds was around Dominion Polaron. It's, it's, it's really nice modifiers as well along that. Unfortunately, it's only a rare drop for, for it, even at the end game, so it takes a bit of upgrade in order to get it to ultra rare, which is what you really need it to be at, at least, or, or epic. Um, but yeah, um, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a decent um, beam array if, if you're doing a drain build of some sort. Uh, if, if you want kind of survival, the Leaf Fleet Drainer Polaron is okay. But for Polaron weapons, this is a waste of money. This is a complete waste of money um, inside the game because you have my number one, which is just better than this thing in, in basically every, every category. Besides the fact that this thing starts at ultra rare when the other one starts at very rare. So it, the only reason why you would take this is if you, you never intend to upgrade ever, then maybe take this thing instead. My number two, and the one that a lot of your DPS guys probably should be using, especially if you're going to use torpedoes or mines at all, is the Vodwar Polaron. Um, it's for this particular weapon, is the reason why actually inside the game, the Vodwar are the hardest enemies to tank. It's also why the Battle of, of Kofaraz, the which is an elite only mission, it's really hard to tank those guys. Um, typically, Whenever you see people succeeding in that mission, it's because you have a lot of really high-end DPS people in your group. Just having one or two tanks, even if they're high-end tanks, is not going to be enough. And you definitely can't have science tanks either. They, they just don't work. Um, the proc is a 10% shield harness reduction to energy weapons and a 50% shield harness reduction to kinetic weapons. Which is which is the big point because Vodwar have a lot of mine explosions going on around you. However, of course, my number one for this is going to be the Piezo Polaron Beam Array. These are insanely good. First off, this thing, unlike most um, procs inside the game, which are at 2.5%, this is a 5% chance for a proc, which is very nice and very good. Now, I mentioned that this does give, give added shield regeneration, plus it gives additional hull regeneration based upon what your maximum hull is which means that if you're a tank player or a player just that just happens to have a lot of hull on their ship this thing really synergizes extremely well for survival it's from the car reputation so it's also really easy to access especially if you're trying to level up that reputation you're probably going to get a, get, get a couple drops of these in case it's something that you want in my opinion, it's the best survival energy subtype in, in, in inside the game for, for everything. Okay, let's go ahead and get into our second section, which is Tetrion weapons. There are not a lot of variants for this, as there's only five that I can really tell inside of it. There is one good survival. Um, the rest of them kind of suck, to be honest. Um, it has decent DPS support if you're willing to get lobby-specific weapons and consoles. Most of the Tetrion stuff falls in, in, into lobby, unfortunately, or the exchange. If, if you're not going, if you're not willing to go into one of those two things, you probably shouldn't use Tetrion weapons. Just kind of the way it is inside the game. So my bottom of the list, my number five is Phase Tetrion. Again, just like with, with Polaron, the phaser proc does not seem to, at least for me personally, does not synergize that well with Tetrion nor with, with Polaron that well. That's just me personally. It's, it, you, get, you get this from the Tholian lockbox or off of the exchange if, if you so choose. Um, the, stab, the, the stabilizing Tetrion is a little bit better. This is basically just a longer lasting Tetrion proc. That, that's really much of a counter against enemies that have a lot of shield heals or have a really strong regenerative shield um, regenerative shield array on their ship. That, that's really what this thing is it's designed to kind of to help counter. So you're able to get a lot more weapons to hit their hull. Number three is the Life Fleet Veneric Tetrion. Not particularly great, but there's also very few Tetrion Beam Array stuff here in general. So kind of just the way it is. 
Uh, number two is the refracting tetrion. This is the only one from rep, 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 reputation. It's also decent at threat because alongside its regular tetrion proc, it also has potentially to chain to another um, nearby enemy. So you, you can potentially hit more than eight enemies during a firing cycle. Which, if you're hitting a lot more enemies with running stance, it means it's a lot more likely that you have more enemies that are going to be attacking you. Which, as, as a tank, that is what you want. My number one, of course, should we know surprise, is Diffuse of Tetrion. This is from the Zenkethi lockbox, and this gives you um, additional shield resistance while, while taking away shield resistance from an enemy that, that you're fighting. Very strong for most Tetrion builds inside the game. Um, if you could be a Tetrion tank, this is one you probably should have on, on your ship. Just saying. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and get into the section 3, which is Plaza Weapons. Uh, there's also not a lot of variants for this guy either. It still has 8, though, along with one extremely good tank variant that we received during the Victory's Life expansion. Um, the fun thing about Plasma is because um, its proc basically... Um, gives a lingering plasma fire damage to enemies that lasts for 15 seconds unless they use something like has hazard emitters to get rid of it. Um, it's going to it's gonna keep on adding more threat to enemies and prompt them to attack you more frequently, even if your DPS is a little bit slightly lower than someone else inside of your group. This is why this is the highest threat generation energy weapon inside the game. This is better than even some of the other ones. Um, unfortunately, because it doesn't have a set reputation omnidirectional beam array, some of the, some of the, the tank strategies that I've suggested suggested on this channel cannot happen with this energy type. So you'll have to stick with broadsiding or with using single cannons and turrets if you want to tank with plasma. But outside of that, it's it's an awesome energy type. Uh, number eight here is caustic plasma which is only available to the Romulan Republic um, in the mission The Last Stand, which, in my opinion, is one of the best missions in, in the Romulan Republic storyline in the entire game, even one of the best missions in, in the game in general for its story. It builds up to that mission. It's super awesome. Of course, you still have the other cross-faction story after that, but that's the big pinnacle there with, with the Alachi. Um, it's basically a faster-burning plasma proc. So if you are a DPS captain, you will like this better than regular plasma. Otherwise, regular plasma is basically the same thing for you. Uh, number seven is the Elite Colony Junior Plasma. Kind of the same thing. It's kind of meh, but it's still there if you need a little bit more survivability. Number six is the Ramen Plasma from the New Romulus rep Reputation. It's basically just a simple plasma weapon that has a disruptor proc on it which you've seen before in some other stuff inside of this video. Um, this is um, pretty straightforward, pretty solid, pretty good. Number five is Chronoplasma. Um, it still has a damage over time of Plaza, but it also lowers the, the flight speed of enemies. Having like a control abilities in general generate a, a, lot of, a lot of threat, including lowering flight speed, as well as disables and holes and those types of things. Um, number four, plasmatic biomatter. Um, this does a one kilometer um, plasma cloud um, if the proc goes off, as well as lowering flight speed by even more than, than the last weapon. So this, and because it still has a lot of plasma burn from this weapon, this is a very good AOE threat um, specific um, beam array. Number three is the isolytic plasma. Um, this weapon pulls enemies um, with with its with its proc, as well as confuses mines and, and torpedoes, which means that this is an, an excellent weapon if you're going to be fighting the Vodmar. You know, the other enemies that want to use a lot of plasma and, or sorry, a lot of torpedo and, and mine weapons inside the game. It does a little bit of extra, of extra plasma burn as well, but it's really the pull enemies closer and confusing mines and torpedoes is really why you would want this thing. The number two weapon is corrosive plasma. In my testing for DPS in terms of things, this one seems to be the one that does the best in terms of DPS. Other ones might be a little bit better, but this one this seems to be the more 
the more reliable in terms of doing better DPS inside the game. This is from the Delta Expedition lockbox. You can get the progressive plasma beam array, or you can get the um, turrets and um, single cannons if you're going to be if you're going to be a tank. However, with Victory is Life, we do have one weapon that's better, and that is Ferenginar Plasma. Um, this is a better version of an anti-proton weapon that was, was released a couple years ago. This is from the Deep Space Nine lockbox. This is a scaling da all damage re damage uh, reduction to enemies. And if it gets to four stacks, it also disables for five seconds, which is which is long. It's very long. Most of the, the other disables that, that you'll see in this video are like two or two and a half seconds. Because this is five seconds, it's very long. It's very long and very good. It's this disable combined, combined with this is why the, this is really, really good. If we didn't have this, this disable, this would actually fall a little bit lower on this tier list. But that's just my personal opinion on it. All right, so let's go ahead and get into section four, which is anti-proton weapons. And for anti-proton, anti their general proc is that they um, innately have additional crit severity on, on their weapons, which means in order to basically want to use these weapons effectively, you're gonna to wanna to have a lot of critical chance on these weapons so that whenever your weapons do crit, they do even more damage than other energy weapons inside the game. When I started the game in 20, 2013-2014-ish, um, this was the best type of weapon in, in, in the game. That changed, it kind of, it kind of flipped between anti-proton and plasma, and then they kind of both fell out of favor a, a little while later. This does have decent DPS support, but um, you do need a lot of crit, critical chance in order to compete with other energy weapon types inside the game. You really should be looking between 15 and 20% critical chance if you want if, if you want anti-proton to be a good damage type for you. So let's go ahead and get into this. Voth anti-proton looks really similar to the Ferenginar plasma, except this thing is completely garbage. Quite literally, the only reason why you should be using this weapon is if you're doing a specific Voth theme build for a ship. If you don't do that, then there's no reason to use this weapon at all. It's extremely hard to get off off of the exchange. It costs a lot of money. Even on PC, it costs a lot of money. Between the console, this is completely inaccessible. And yeah, it's, a, it's just a garbage proc. So yeah, don't, don't get this weapon. You'll see this in a, in a build that I will use later in probably a month or two. Do not copy the build. Do not use this weapon. Fluidic Antiproton is a slightly better thing. Its proc is actually situationally useful, but not by much. There's a couple specific like space protect a certain target in which pushing people away is useful. Otherwise, there's no point to have this weapon at all. So just saying. Number five is the Colony Beam Array. It does give you some better survival, but there are other ones as well in this list that are better. Uh, number four is Delphic Anti-Proton. This is decent for DPS. Um, however, its proc only lasts for five seconds. It does give you more, crit, more crit intense crit severity, which is very good for Anti-Proton. However, um, the Herald Anti-Proton is just better because its proc lasts longer and its proc helps everything. A lot more things in general. You can even use this on a rainbow build and this would still be effective for you. Gives a lot of bonus energy damage instead of regular energy damage and so it's still gonna be helpful for you. Still from, it's still from the exchange and lock boxes though. My top two actually are from reputations though in, in this category. Number two is Radiant Anti-Proton, which is from the Iconian Resistance um, rep rep Reputation. Um, when this was released, it was decent for survival in that it gave you a bunch of temporary hit points for 15 seconds that could stack. This was back in the game when maximum HP was around 30 to 50,000 hit points. And so this was adding in another like two to 10% hit points. Nowadays, when me as a tank with a couple of starship traits, I'm 
around 150,000 plus hit points, getting an additional couple thousand temporary hit points doesn't really matter. And also, the temporary hit points don't have the damage just rating of your other stuff. It still is nice to have that still for a little bit of a buffer, but it's not as good as, as, as on paper as, as it used to, for sure. Number one is the Temporal Defense Chronoton Beam Arrays. These are anti-proton damage, even though, the, the, even though the title doesn't look like that it is. Um, this is from Temporal Defense. This is basically a different version of Diffusive Tetrion, but for an anti-proton, to put it very simply. Um, it's a scaling up to a little bit better point if you can get a lot of procs on it. It's a 60 second stacking proc, so it, it can last a long time. And it gives you more flight speed and turn rate, but more importantly, a lot of additional shield resistance, which, which, is, which is pretty valuable. It, there is this there's there's this type, this type of weapon that I am using on my rainbow build for my discovery captain. Anyway, this next last section is phaser weapons. There's 11 energy variants here that I'll be going over. I mean, the regular phaser beam array alone has four different looks for it. Regular phaser and Dorian phaser, single uh, or uh, the single beam array as well as twin phaser beam arrays. These two guys from TOS era. This guy is just an Andorian from, an, from the Andorian ships, and this is just a regular phaser look. You can, you can get phaser weapons from crafting or, or from missions. Also from the uh, most recent discovery mission, you can also get a discovery looking, a, a discovery theme looking phaser weapon that has these type of procs instead of um, the exchange. Um, discovery procs if you really really want to what what's nice about phasers is that because it has this ram subsystem offline it can, it can add a lot of chaos to a lot of, a lot of situations add a lot of surprise as to if, if the proc goes off what does it actually do anywhere from oh they can't move so it's easier to hit oh they lost auxiliary power and so for most enemies it doesn't matter or hey they lost their weapon so they can't shoot at me or they lost their shield so i can easily kill them you know, there's a lot of different things that could possibly happen. And, but overall, like, you don't actually even need a lot of these phaser subtypes I'm, I'm about to go go through. Because there's so many phaser DPS enhancers and set bonuses in universal consoles that even with just a regular phaser beam array and even ignoring the procs altogether, it's still an extremely strong route. Of course, it's probably also because most players play federation and they want to use um phaser weapons anyway and so it's it, it's an option for them so my my the very bomb is the elite fleet phasers from the fleet starbase it's a phaser proc with shield regeneration on it which isn't really that great to be honest it's it's okay but it's not great and alongside that the colony phaser it's kind of the same thing. It just gives you a whole and shield heal on its proc, along with potentially having a, the phaser proc go off with it. Again, okay, but not that great, to be honest. Phase biomatter. It's basically the phaser version of, of the plasma biomatter, except because you don't have the phaser damage, you know, or sorry, the plasma damage that has a lot of the DOT stuff going on enemies, it's not that great. It, it has a, a tiny bit of instant, um, whatever it's called, um, for generation, but you're, you're, doing, you're doing beam firewall, so it's not going to be super insanely effective because you don't have that extra radiation damage amplifying this further. My number eight is the biomolecular phaser, which is from a counter command re reputation, so it's fairly easy to get. And you could probably get a bunch of them just as you're leveling up your, your re reputation. Um, it does give you a bit of speed um, reduction as well as radiation damage, as well as it also allows you to have a phaser proc too. So it has all that too. Pretty nice. Number seven is the pulse phaser. This used to be one of the really, really good phasers inside the game because it, it um, to put it basically simply, it's basically the, um, the disruptor proc 
combined with another special proc that all also gives you more damage resistance rating, which is pretty nice and unique for for, for a um, for a, a weapon. Pulse phases were extremely popular with um, dual beam banks for, for that type of build, and that's kind of why why this is this was really popular a long time ago. So now we're getting into the three linked phaser beam arrays. In my personal opinion, the emitter linked ones are, are the worst ones of, of the three. Um, the only way I see justifying the real reason to take this over the other ones is if you're going to be a tank for one. And if second, you don't want to use a regenerative shield array, which if you're a tank, that's what you should be using. But if you want, for instance, if you want to use the Iconian um, um, resilient shield array, then you can take this to get some additional um, shield capacity and shield healing, shield passive healing. Um, otherwise, you shouldn't be taking this. My next one on the list is sensor linked, which I know it's definitely be controversial that I have this under in integrity linked, but just hear me out. Of, of all the ones for passive stuff, this is the only one of the three that does anything to amplify damage. So anyone who's super focused on weapons that will give you more damage, they will immediately say sensor linked is the way to go. If you're a PvP player, you'll also say sensor linked is the way to go because it gives you more defense, so it's harder for people to hit you. That's nice, but these stats are extremely low. And if you actually look, look at a lot of the scaling, um, this gives you the least bang for your buck of, of the three, actually. It's just that this one gives you offensive stuff while the other ones do fully defense, which is why your your DPS guys are always saying on, on the right forms that this is the best one by far. If you're doing str strict tanking, Integrity Linked is much better. The, uh, the five stuff there for whole capacity damage control is much better value um, to allow you to tank better. Just saying. Um, with, with all the linked stuff for phaser and, and, and disruptors that I'll show you later, um, you lose your regular um, proc to have the passive stats. It's just the way that, that, that they work. My, my number three is the Kelvin Timeline Phaser. This is because um, it has a three second hold on, on its proc, which a lot of people probably don't even realize is actually there, but it is there. And it's an AOE hold. And it, a chance to hold for three seconds versus all foes within one kilometer of, 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 of your target, which is pretty powerful. An AOE hold, which by the way, the disables and holds in the game are some of the stuff that gives the highest threat. It's also why your, your control abilities like Gravity Well do so much threat because they are a form of pull slash hold. So they are pretty powerful. So like, especially like if you want to do a Kelvin timeline um, tank, with the with the Kelvin Enterprise, and then use Kelvin phasers, you could have a very very strong broadside tank. I'm doing that method. Just saying. My number two is the Phasic Harmonic Beam Arrays. These are the brand new phaser um, arrays that came out with the recent Swarm Lockbox. These are very very good. They um, their proc is a 2.5 second disable, which is very strong. Plus, it's a 7.5 second amount of kinetic damage over time that bypasses shields entirely. Um, this is very strong. Plus, it gives you more kinetic damage, which is nice. It's, it's a, lot, a lot of variety there. My number one is extremely similar to this, but it, it, it's a little bit older, which is the Agony Phaser, which is basically the same thing, except it's a disable with with it with a damage over time phaser damage instead of kinetic and it's for 15 seconds instead of 7.5 if, if we're talking about a dps captain a dps captain is going to tell you that phaser harmonic is better as a tank captain i'm them telling you that agony phaser is better for tanks because that that um that, that over time damage means that it'll last for longer for that enemy to be targeting you that, that's just the way that, that overtime effect, effects work inside this game. 
but that's just me. They're both very strong. All right, so let's go ahead and get into our very last section, which is disruptor weapons. And there are 14 energy variants for disruptors. Yay for that, huh? Um, you can get these through crafting. Um, and these guys have the highest DPS threshold of all the energy types in the entire game because of the number one weapon in this category. If you take out that weapon, then technically um, Phaser now has the edge, but not by much. Um, Disruptor also has a bunch of DPS enhancers and set bonuses in universal consoles to help with, with damage. The regular proc, uh, proc for this thing is that it lowers the damage resistance rate of enemies by, by 10 for 15 seconds. Number, number 14 is the Alachi Disruptor. This guy used to be insanely good and in, in a terror in PvP combat because of this proc that it gave you 50 armor pen and 100% shield penetration on your weapons. When they changed the procs on some of the stuff inside the game, they changed this one so that this proc is just for that initial shot from that one Alachi weapon. Not for, not lasting for all of the rest of them for a little while but just for the one for that initial shot which means that this thing is pretty worthless now to be honest um I, I, until they change that or, or unless they change that recently and i, and I haven't, haven't been hearing about it this thing is the worst disruptor weapon of all of them inside the game right now um polarized disruptor i don't like the synergy between polaron and disruptor for for their procs so I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not a big fan of this weapon, but that's just me. Um, and likely Draenei Disruptor, um, same problems as I said before with other fleet Draenei weapons. It used to be great when they were, when it, it was in beta. When they released this out, it, it's very weak. It's just a very weak heal instead of a decent shield or decent heal and shield constant stuff going. So yeah. Number 11 is the Krieger Wave Disruptor. Um, it's it's a situationally useful weapon. However, most of your builds that, that use drain and, and control ex expertise aren't in Disruptors. It's typically in Tetrion or in Polaron that you're going to be venturing in with this type of stuff that you're wanting. So I'm not sure why you want that unless you're someone that literally is just putting on the the beam array just for the proc which i know some people do then sure maybe that might be nice for you number 10 is a plasma disruptor hybrid beam array this is these are from very specific missions for whichever, whichever faction that you're a part of federation past and perfect kdf second star to the right and steer until morning realm of republic smash and grab again as i said, said in previous videos if you're a dominion captain it's with whatever faction that you allied with is whichever um, missions are available to you for mission for technical mission replays for you. This guy has a, a disruptor proc along with a plaza proc, especially for a threat build. Having that additional plaza th proc for even more threat generation is very valuable. So yeah, my number nine is the spiral wave disruptor. The Disruptor proc plus Phaser proc is actually decent. Not particularly super fantastic, but decent. Um, a lot of people really like Spiral Wave Disruptors. I wish they changed back to be a rollable, if they already have, whatever. Um, you have to get a Tier 5 or Tier 6 Cardassian Starship in order to access these, though. Whether from the real sources themselves or from the Dilithium store. Um, whether you get them off the Exchange or off of the Sea store, it doesn't matter. But if it's off for the Exchange, it's per captain. Like, you, you, you can't just get a Cardassian ship off the exchange and then be able to use Spiral Wave Disruptors for your entire account. It's just, it's just not how the game works. My number eight is, is the Biomolecular Disruptor. It lowers speed and does a little bit of radiation, plus it has that Disruptor proc on, on it too. This is just from Counter Command, and so it's a little bit more affordable and easier to access than other ones, and it's still a very good um, weapon overall. So yeah, uh, number seven is the Nanite Disruptor. This is a slightly weaker weapon. 
it it lowers the damage resistance rating to um, give you more shield bleed through. So this is much more for someone who wants a more wolf rounded beamery. This is definitely good, but this one's a bit better because it still has the, the disruptor proc. Plus, it allows you to potentially damage shields um, and do 25% more damage to their shields for 10 seconds with, with a different proc. This guy is the Fleet Disruptor Beam Array. Okay, this thing, like, for stuff from Fleet, this thing is pretty strong. Just going to put it out there. Different there's a fabricator for disruptors, it's worth it. For phaser, it's not. There you go. And then now we get into the linked disruptors. Same thing as the last time that I said uh, emitter stuff is better for tanking if you don't have a regenerator shield. Sensor linked is better for your DPS and PvP captains because it's the only one of the three linked um, options that actually gives you more damage. Integrity linked is best for, for true tanks inside the game. All from the discovery lockbox. My number two is is the Withering Disruptor from the Terran Task Force um, rep, rep, reputation, and uh, it's a second radiation that lasts sixty seconds, and it periodically damages the enemy. So it's 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 almost like a very long lasting plasma um, burn on on the enemy, which is really nice especially if you're trying to gain a lot of threat generation. It is very nice. Of course, as for those of you that know a lot about DPS, you would know that my number one in disruptors is the Coalition Disruptor. This is from the Year of Hell lockbox. If you have a group of five that all have Coalition Disruptors, this is the best DPS energy type in the entire game because the proc is 20 disruptor resistance it's, it's a 20 instead of all damage resistance rating it lowers the disruptor resistance resistance rating of an enemy for 30 seconds instead of like 10 or 15 and it can stack up to five times so potentially a, a really tough enemy could have a minus 100 disruptor resistance rating which most enemies don't even have that that much to begin with for normal stuff so this thing is very, very strong, very, very good. It's much more geared around pre-made groups for it to be effective. So unless you're a pre-made group, this might not be the best option for you, but if it is, this is probably the best energy option in the entire game. That's that's basically it there. Um, for my little kind of CLDW, I'm just showing you very quickly the various variants for, for every single energy type, as well as how many of them have a reputation that allows them to have a lot of that pair of reputations like you know beam array or whatever polaron's okay it's a little bit low on energy variance but it has three from reputations so it's doing very well there tetrion's the is the weak link here it only has five variants and only ones from reputation tetrion needs a lot more love plasma has eight variants and one from reputations so it's okay not great but okay it's a proton has seven variants, but two are from reputation, so pretty high there. Phaser only has 11 variants and only one from reputation. However, I'm fairly confident that the, the discovery reputation that will eventually be coming out is going to include a phaser option in, in, inside of its reputation for sure. So I'm fairly certain that that's what's going to happen there, and so it'll also have two reputations. Then Disruptor has a bazillion variants, 14 here from what I've been able to count, and two, ha and two of, the, of those are from reputations. So if we're talking about strictly from reputations for energy weapons, once the phaser gets its, its discovery version stuff, it should be Tetrion and Plasma that you're, you focus on in, in the super near future so that they, they don't feel as, as neglected inside the game. But yeah, um, that's my basic video for now. Uh, just talk about the various energy types inside the game. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Um, feel free to like and subscribe if you like, like this content. Um, I keep on trying to do thoughtful videos on, on, on this channel, so hopefully you 
really, really enjoy the, enjoy the content. Um, so yeah, that's basically it for now for today. Um, thank you all for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.